Hey guys, something a little different this time. Uh, I'll be doing the critiques on the iPad here. These are critiques for the Jonathan Seagull lesson, which you can find on mypaintingclub.com. There are a couple of goals for this lesson. One was to create an interesting painting with a limited palette. Another goal was to do a painting which had quite intense detail in the center of focus and then quite abstract gestural work outside of that. So the best of both worlds. So this is a really nice dramatic subject with uh, strong light and a really nice form to it. Nice cast shadows and little spots of color in the beak and the legs which um, really pop out against all that gray in the painting. So we've got my painting on the left here and there's the resource photo that um, I took and painted that painting with it. On the right we've got the student painting. It is a little unfair, you know, comparing the student's work with the tutor's work. First of all, because I've actually painted this painting quite a few times now, maybe four times. Four times in a similar sort of a way. So having all that practice made it a lot easier for me to do a good job. Now this is um, probably Brian's first attempt at this. And I also just want to say, look, we're all on the same journey trying to improve our painting. So it doesn't matter where you are on that journey because just the fact that you're on that path, that you're making steps forward is fantastic. And the fact is we all start pretty much in the same place when we're kids on that journey. So the amount of progress you make from that point onwards is really all about how much you enjoy sitting down being in that creative space and how many opportunities you give yourself to do that. So with that said, let's look at Brian's work. So straight away I can see that the drawing of the bird is pretty good. I mean the proportions are good, the size of the legs is pretty good, size of the head compared to the rest of the bird, that's good. Now obviously if you look closely at and compare these two drawings of the birds, you're going to notice some differences. Um, I mean, even if you look at the differences between the photo of the bird and what I created, you're going to see some differences. So that's perfectly natural. Um, while you are learning to draw and get your head around how to get proportions right and angles right, when it comes to doing a painting, it can be a really good idea just to use a grid or a tracing method. And that can be a really big help in getting the drawing a lot closer to what you'd like it in the finished painting because the drawing is normally the first place where student paintings fall down. That's simply because they haven't done enough drawing and have dived straight into paint, which is seems to be the fun stuff. But as I said, the drawing is pretty good on your painting, Brian. And what I'm also liking is seeing the light on the bird that you've created these cool shadows and also subtly different these warm shadows under here all right so that's some pretty subtle modeling i'm not sure that the photo that you've taken of your work there has actually done credit to your painting i think there'd probably be a little more contrast in this whole area it's just that when you get a high contrast image like this cameras tend to overexpose for either the lights or to underexpose for the dark darks and in this case i think it's probably overexposed a little bit for the lights here so you're not getting as much contrast in this photo as uh, as we might be seeing in the actual painting but if that's not the case i'd just say that it could do with a little more contrast so making the shadows a little darker and certainly making this area here a little darker because really if you think of this whole bird as a big egg or more its body really then you can see that it really does go from light over here to dark over here if you just look at the picture over here you can see that form of the the big egg shape in the bird so when you don't put enough contrast into that form 
when you don't make your darks dark enough you're flattening the form a little bit and uh, you're not seeing that beautiful curve so much of the object and the play of light across the form. Same goes for the head here. It could all be a little darker through the shadow area there. Especially this sharp cast shadow here if you look in the photo because wherever you make dark shadows that have sharp edges that's telling the viewer that you have a really strong light creating those darker shadows with sharper edges so at the moment you've got light shadows with soft edges and that's giving the appearance of a more uh, lower power diffuse light. A couple more comments. Great to see that you've blurred all of the reflections here and uh, done some interesting things with the brushwork. That's all very nice. Uh, keeping that all blurred makes the eye focus on the sharp stuff, which is great. Similar with all the rest of the background, you've made that quite indistinct, so the bird really stands out. That's great. One thing you've missed out in the design a little bit is uh, if you look at my painting on the left I have a very much of a yin and yang design where it's uh, dark on the top with the bird the light of the bird in the middle and then down the bottom it's light with the dark of the reflection in that light so it's almost a yin and yang design where it's dark on the top light on the bottom whereas you've got very much the same sort of value across both the top and the bottom uh, so that's losing that design idea and you've lost the chance to have a little more variety in the painting by doing that so to remedy that you could have just made this all a little bit darker up here and all a little bit lighter down there okay that's just a few little tips Hope that helps and uh, I look forward to seeing the next version of this if you do want to dive in and do another one. That'd be great. Okay, let's have a look at Dala's paintings. These are beautiful paintings. Great work, Dala. Let's have a look at this one. Yeah, it's great drawing, um, good color work, really nice um, details you've added into there. Uh, look at all this beautiful work in here. That's great. And a real sense of warm light versus cool shadows and warm reflected light. So very nice. One little thing I might change about this is that uh, we've got a lot of hard edges in the brushwork in that area, right? And it's sort of making the feathers look hard rather than soft. So if it were me, I would be making um, more blending in there, more soft edges to better give the feel of those soft feathers. Another great painting over here. Again, really good drawing. Great sense of form. Again, with the warm light and the cool shadow. And lots of really nice, interesting work with reflections and surface texture in here. So I'd just say keep up the great work. Really good, Dala. So let's look at Denise's painting. This is really cool, Denise. I really like the uh, gestural style of this. And you've given him a character that's almost like a a vulture feel with this, you know, this feel to it. And the, his, I don't know, his, this seems to be more vulture-ish. Sort of like he's stalking forward, looking for somebody m to mess with. And your whole style of really bold, strong brushwork sort of suits the character of the bird, which is pretty cool. A couple of things I would have liked to see different. Uh, just a little more work in here. Um, you could have done some of these lighter lines coming across it and uh, giving that more surface reflection interest because um, at the moment it's just sort of a, a brown blob. Not a lot of interest there. And we don't want huge interest in the foreground because it's all about the bird. But uh, just feel like that's a little unfinished down there. Could do with a little more tweaking. Also, this hard line you've got 
going through here that's kind of distracting because it's sort of kissing the, the bottom of the bird there and it's sort of cutting his legs off and so if you'd made that um, a bigger transition there a soft edge that would have helped to um, just push that line back in space and let us focus more on the bird which is more the the uh, star of the show rather than the false horizon back there other than those few tweaks I think it's really cool good job so Denise this is really nice work uh, you've got the drawing pretty good there interesting work you've done down here with a reflection and some nice gestural brushwork in the back of the bird here the photograph you've taken unfortunately is giving us a lot of glare here so we're not seeing the true darkness of the background here but I would like to see that a little darker so that the bird is pushed forward of the background a little bit more what I'm also liking is that you've tried to do this mainly with a pretty big brush as you can see with the each brush stroke size in here so that's that's great because that gives you this gestural look that you can't achieve with little brushes so that's great to see so keep up the good work so there's some nice gestural work with this one Laurie uh, that's great to see you using the palette knife to um, blast on some paint there get some really interesting texture also using thin paint in the background to uh, let that sit back in space and let this thick impasto paint pop out into the foreground so that's a really nice contrast I like your gestural brushwork here as well though you are missing a few details in here that could say more about this this form and also just making it slightly darker in this area will give this or we'll end under here a little bit not so strong on the reflected light there would be good that'll give this whole egg shape this round feel of the light coming in here and casting shadow over this side of it so there's some really nice detailed work going on here and I'd just like to see a little bit more of that sort of focus in that area there and perhaps in the legs as well other than that very nice good to see a slightly different approach to it there's some very beautiful work in here Monique great to see strong drawing you've got the form of the bird really nice and the beak actually could be a little better but in general that's really strong drawing especially like the shape of this leg here that's great and in this area you do have a strong sense of the light coming from over here right casting the shadow making it darker around here so, and that's great to see some beautiful work in there and nice big gestural brushwork in there um, but just under here the birds got a little bit too shaggy their feathers tend to tighten up around the base here because remember they got to be pretty watertight to sit on the water and also this whole area is a little too light so you're losing the sense of form of this whole thing being a big egg shape which should get slightly darker even though it's a white surface you know it should get slightly darker under here or just slightly darker than what you have it now it looks like you took the photo in the light rather than in the shadow so you've got a lot of reflection especially from up here and that's making the all the darks especially appear a lot lighter in this photograph of your paintings so just be aware that when you're photographing your paintings especially if it's a glossy oil painting like this that you really should photograph it in the shade and just be aware of what reflections you're getting off the surface might be nice to have a few little bits of interest maybe a shell or a little rock and their reflections in there just a few little things to add a little more interest to the scene overall beautiful work hey Rachel good to see you doing a painting of something slightly different but applying the same ideas 
Um, so it's a beautiful owl, great drawing. So I expect from the accuracy of the drawing that you've transferred it on using the grid method or uh, tracing method, unless you just happen to be a really good drawer at this point. Um, but that's great to see, you know, really accurate drawing, uh, giving us a, a beautiful shape, beautiful silhouette really, isn't it, of this owl against the dark background. Now, um, it's a shame that you've photographed this with light reflecting off this because I know this area here is reflecting a lot of light and it's not giving us the true dark value of the background here, which I assume is kind of similar to over here or over here. So for the folks watching at home, try and just imagine all this with a slightly darker background. You can see some stuff here that's um, darker that doesn't have the, the gloss on it and I think that may be the true value the true darkness of this whole background area there so I'll let you ma imagine it like that I love all this big beautiful gestural brushwork that you're getting in here um, contrast with little bits of detail here and there and a nice tight focus on detail in the face which is great and in the foot of course which is great to see. Now color wise you've got this really strong dark blue background right and if it were that strong I would be expecting to see this blue color in the bird but it's color wise it looks like the bird has been cut out and pasted onto this dark blue background because you're not introducing blue into the shadow areas so I would expect to see it coming in here, just adding, you know, a darker blue-gray into some of these areas which are turning around the form and heading off into the background. So um, over here as well, it's turning over the form, heading into the background. So I would expect to see this blue starting to work its way into these areas and that will help unite the bird with the background and stop it looking uh, like a cut out owl that's pasted on a dark blue background. That'll also give you more contrast because at the moment you have the very dark background and it seems like a very strong light source as you can tell from the light areas but I would be expecting to see more depth in the shadow areas like in here um, in here perhaps depending where the lights coming from under here a little bit so having that depth of shadow is going to create a rounder form and a more dynamic painting okay hope that helps good work Rachel hey Scott this is really nice work um, beautiful gestural brushwork and here um, color wise you've done really well in getting all the values right and uh, this dark background and this nice soft transition through to the light in the foreground You've done well here in the reflection as well getting all these vertical strokes contrast with the surface tension of the the wet sand now it looks like he's got furry legs just because the way you've cut into there with the background blue I assume or not sure why maybe you've um, just dusted it lightly with a, a dry brush but uh, I would want some sharper definition on those that just doesn't look quite right having furry legs there's some really nice work in the shadow and the light getting soft transitions soft transitions and hard edge so um, really nice attention to detail there could have had a little stronger modeling of the darks in here this area here because this at the moment this whole section looks a bit the same so if you had a little bit darker through here you would have ended up with a slightly more rounded feel to it and my last thought is that the eye just looks unfinished he's got a tiny little cartoon dot there and he really just needs a little more work to finish it off however that's going to be. Other than that, beautiful work. Hey Sharon, thanks for your beautiful painting. Uh, really nice color work in here. You've got a green feel to the whole thing. 
which is really cool um, and really warm light contrasted with cool shadows which is great to see and the orangey red is really poking out against the this green gray background so that's really nice to see that color combination working well I also like your uh, gestural brushwork in here I'm assuming this one's done in acrylics by the look of it I think these areas here have just got a little too light because they're breaking the whole shadow area the lights coming from here and this should just be in shadow moving up gradually into the light but these shapes here that you've got are breaking that big shadow form in there just a little too light I love all this interesting color work in here the soft transition these uh, very subtle differences in the edge from sharp edge to soft edge to cast shadow so this little strip of light in here and this gradual transition in this area very nice uh, the legs could have been done with a slightly smaller brush or a little more care or just carved back into with the background to create a, a thinner shape they just look a little stocky and this leg here looks a little broken just perhaps bending at the wrong place there I'd also question your design having the tail touching the edge of the canvas there creating a tension point which is not too bad because it's it's mainly dark but um, these little light points right on the edge of the canvas uh, I just think it's it tends generally to be a bad idea to draw the eye to the side or or the corners of of the canvas so that's something to watch out for design wise in uh, your next painting perhaps the brushwork in the background here could do with the odd vertical stroke to break up the uh, monotony of that feel back there overall great work just a few tips there to uh, hopefully help you out hey Tina this is a beautiful painting thank you for submitting it I really love the uh, the exciting brushwork you got going on here and even in, in the background here very gestural and um, even spraying splatters onto the canvas here is nice so a real feel like he's leaning into the wind and uh, the the wind is just messing with his feathers that's great and a great sense of light and dark as well you've got your values just right so this whole shape here is obviously the lights here and um, it's casting a shadow like this over the whole form really nicely done also like your variation in edges you've got some sharp edge versus broken edge versus really soft edge another sharp edge so very nice attention to edges there to me what would just finish this painting off a couple of things I think he needs a bottom beak there I think this leg should be attached a little stronger to his body and then curve out slightly into a foot and he could do with a couple of things and reflections just to add more interest to that to this whole area here and not to mention your signature somewhere beautiful work so thanks everybody who uh, submitted their painting for the monthly workshop and uh, hope you got a lot out of those critiques and I hope to see you next time happy painting Thank <laughs> you.